The Dodger Warm-Up Show, brought to you by the good sound of KTAR and by your local Arizona Toyota dealer. See him soon for America's lowest-priced hardtop, the Toyota Corona. Get your hands on a Toyota and you'll never let go. Well, hi, everyone. From Dodger Stadium, the Dodgers are back home for the final six games of the year, and they will start off tonight with the San Francisco Giants. And the pitching tonight will be Gaylord Perry going for San Francisco and Don Sutton for the Dodgers. And as the ball game begins, the Giants are a game and a half back and about to be two back as they're playing in the ninth inning at Atlanta with Atlanta leading San Diego by a score of 10 to 4. In that game, Joe Necro started against Phil Necro and the Braves erupted for six runs in the third inning to come from behind three to nothing. They added another in the fourth, two in the fifth inning, and one more in the seventh inning. So it is Atlanta leading by a score of 10 to 4 and if the Braves win, their magic number will be just four. We'll have more on the scoreboard a little later on. Our guest tonight will be the Dodger manager, Walter Austin. And Vince Scully will visit with the skipper right after this message. Say, why is a Toyota Corona so different from other economy cars? Well, certainly that's a fair question. And the answer goes like this. To begin with, the Toyota Corona has standard features you wouldn't expect to find on any economy car. Wall-to-wall nylon carpeting, fully reclining bucket seats, there's a padded dash, vinyl interior, and more, all in a surprisingly roomy interior. And Toyota Corona gives you unexpected performance, too. Zero to 60 in just 16 seconds. Tops 90 miles per hour with the soft swoosh of a heavyweight. And last, but certainly least, is the price. Very low. You know, the roomy four-door sedan checks in at under $2,000? That's right. While the Toyota Corona hardtop is America's lowest-priced hardtop. So why not see your local Toyota dealer today? He can show you a really different economy car. The plush, quick, and quiet Toyota Corona. Walter, perhaps this is a question that needn't be asked, and at the same time, I think it should be. Namely, is it tough for the ball club to play the last six games? Have they left their season behind them, or do you think that they still have some baseball left? Well, I think it's a good test, uh, then to, to see whether these fellows are going to quit or whether they're going to go ahead and give the best they got. And I think that, uh, judging from the way they fought back uh, all year long. We've had a kind of an uphill battle all year long, and uh, I'm, I've been proud of this club in the past as the way they have come back, and and I think that they uh, they feel that they owe the Giants uh, uh, a good going over, and, and I, I, I hope they feel that way. I feel that way about it, and I, I think the club does too. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, they may beat us, but I, I don't believe that they'll quit. Waller, in looking two things about the 1969 ball club, it was an over 500 club on the road. At one time it was 31, 28, then it got to be like 33 and 31, and then suddenly, uh, it seems suddenly, they just stopped winning on the road completely. I think they found out they lost 18 of their last 20 games, for instance. Was there anything apparent to you as to why this ball club would suddenly stop losing on the road? No, Ben, I, I don't believe that uh, on the road or at home made that much difference. I, I, there's always an advantage of being home or with the fans in your favor and uh, uh, you're a little more accustomed to the park and uh, we don't have the wind to contend with here as we do in San Francisco. I, I thought this, uh, we've never played too well in San Francisco for the past several years and uh, I thought we kind of psyched ourselves out uh, going in there and uh, thinking about the wind, the cold weather and the things of that kind rather than uh, trying to forget about it and beat the club. I guess the Giants get accustomed to that. They just know that they have to play in it and they they forget about it. But uh, uh, whatever it was, we have not played well on the road. And I, I think it's basically, though, that the club uh, hit a slump uh, on the road and uh, we didn't put the things together very well. Some of our hitters that have been driving in runs all year long just uh, quit and our pitching was not as good as it uh, has been all year. And and even when we did uh, have a good pitch game, we would end up not getting any runs or not enough. And uh, when we did score a few runs, like the game against Marischal, where we scored five runs, it was not enough. We faltered in the pitching. So we uh, we have no excuses. We just didn't put it together very good, and we didn't play as well as we have been playing. Sometimes when a ball club is a very successful ball club, you talk about that moment when it became a successful team. I wonder if there is such a thing as one moment during a baseball season where a good ball club started to go downhill. 
in looking back over the records, it could be the sweep by the New York Mets in New York the last week in August. It might very well be that statistically, anyway, the club never recovered from that. That's true. We uh, we lost those four in New York, and I thought we had a, a pretty good right to win two of them, at least, if I remember correctly. We we made a few mistakes in, in those games that we did not, uh, or that we could have won and didn't. And uh, I thought in, in San Diego was another bad one for us, where we uh, uh, came off of a good home stand and went in there with the idea that we should at least take two or three of those games and ended up losing all four. I thought in, in uh, only one of those games did we play well enough to actually deserve to win it, and that was the second game when we got 12 hits and hit about five or six more line drives that were caught and ended up with one run. But outside of that, of that game, uh, we didn't play well enough and didn't hit well enough to, uh, to beat them, and they, just, uh, they were in a little hot streak, and they, they went ahead and uh, played better than we did, so we lost those three, and that was another key place in our downfall. Was there a time when, although you hated to admit it, you felt deep down that the ball club was going to come up short? Well, I uh, after the uh, after the Giants series where we uh, blew one game and lost two others, uh, I uh, began to wonder if uh, time wasn't going to wear out these pitchers that have been pitching all year long with us. Uh, we had three regular stars all year, and they took the regular turn, and uh, not that uh, Bunning didn't do a good job. I'm well pleased with Bunning, but uh, it was asking a lot for uh, that sort of starting staff to maybe go that long. And then, of course, we put a lot of pressure on Brewer and Mickelson, and they both came up a little bit lame. Brewer with the back, and Mickelson had a little bit of a sore arm. So we, we more or less ran out of gas, I think, towards the last month of the season. Uh, if we could have had an off day here or there, we might have helped us, but uh, that sounds a little too much like an excuse. I think we just, uh, these other clubs played a little better. We'd have this last, uh, last two or three weeks. We'll be right back with our guest, the manager of the Dodgers, Walter Alston, and have more right after this message. Friends, if you set out to build an economy car to fit American taste, and American driving conditions, you'd probably end up with a Toyota Corona. Why? Well, for starters, the Toyota Corona is one of the quickest, most responsive economy cars ever built. You can go zero to 60 in just 16 seconds. Tops 90 miles per hour. And then there's the Corona's surprisingly plush interior. Wall-to-wall nylon carpeting, fully reclining bucket seats, vinyl trim, padded dash, and more. All standard equipment. And you can choose a sporty Corona hardtop, America's lowest-priced hardtop, or a roomy four-door Corona sedan for under $2,000. Performance and comfort both in a low price package. So see your local authorized Toyota dealer and test drive the Toyota Corona, an economy car unique in all the world. It's the all-American import. We're visiting with our guest, manager Walter Olson of the Dodgers. Walter, as we go into the last two series of the year, in retrospect, how would you sum up 69? Well, Vinny, uh, as I said the other day, I think uh, a lot of people remember how you finish, and of course if we continue to finish poorly, I think they'll remember this as a, as a bad Dodger team. But in my own heart, in looking back over the entire season, uh, I think there were some good things, and... Uh, uh, this club had pretty good spirit uh, and fought back pretty good uh, in the past and I think that uh, we're proud of some of the youngsters that uh, showed improvement this year I, I think you have to give uh, Campanis, Mr. Campanis credit for a couple of the trades that were made Maury certainly has helped us and Moda and uh, looking uh, beyond that I, I think that we we have more youngsters coming up uh, uh, that show good promise and I'm a little optimistic about uh, getting into those fellas, although they may not be ready for next year. I, I think that uh, that Crawford has shown a lot of improvement, and uh, certainly we're proud of Sizemore. He's, he's really helped us, and uh, overall, uh, it hasn't, uh, I hope we can win some more games, but I overall picture uh, we're not totally disappointed in this club. And now, on with the Giants. That's right. Our guest manager, Walter Olson. We'll have more right after this message. Drums. Drums. Are they drums for peace or war, dance or destruction? 
like America drums or hate America drums. This is Martin Gable to tell you that you can help influence the beat. Young people in the developing countries of South America, of Africa, of Asia, are eager to find out more about America, to understand our people and our ideas. You can help through Freedom House Books USA. Six dollars sends a packet of ten books to a young student, maybe a future prime minister, maybe a future doctor or teacher. He can choose from 120 books, books on history, biography, science, and literature. The Russians send thousands of publications to him, but you, with your six dollars, can help inspire a love for freedom. Send your tax-deductible contribution to Freedom House Books USA, 20 West 40th Street, New York, New York, 10018. Well, on the scoreboard, there's a final in now for Atlanta, and the Braves have reduced their magic number to four as they beat San Diego tonight, 10 to four. Phil Negro got his 22nd win, and brother Joe was the loser. He's now lost 17. Home runs in the game, Orlando Cepeda had a grand slam in the third inning. Boyer had one in the third, and Henry Aaron had number 44 in the fourth inning with none on. Dean and Ferrara had home runs for San Diego. Meanwhile, Cincinnati trying to stay close, and they won a doubleheader from Houston. Three to nothing in the first game, a one-hitter by Jim Maloney, the fifth of his career. And in the second game, the Reds won it four to three with Jackson the winner and Larry Durker the loser. May and Bench had home runs in that one, and Bench in the sixth inning with none on, and that was enough to win the game. New York beat Philadelphia as Kuzman got his 17th win, and Feynman was the loser. Chicago went down before Pittsburgh tonight, two to nothing. Ellis. 11 and 17, Jenkins the loser, 21 and 15, and the Pirates will have a new manager as Larry Shepard is out, but the new manager has not been enough. St. Louis beat Montreal 12 to 1, Torrey's the winner, and Wegener was the loser. American League Finals, New York beat Baltimore 4 to 2, Mike Kekich the winner, and Palmer the loser. Washington 4 and Cleveland 1, Coleman over Williams. Boston 6, Detroit 5, Siebert the winner, Hiller was the loser. Night game at Chicago, 3-2. to two, Kansas City leading the White Sox in the eighth inning, and that is at Milwaukee. The Angels at Oakland, one to nothing Angels at the end of a half inning of play, and a little later on it will be Minnesota and Seattle. Here tonight at Dodger Stadium, the first of a three-game series with the Dodgers and the Giants. And the Dodgers now trying to turn it around on the Giants and slow them down just as the Giants did last week at Candlestick Park. Gaylord Perry, 17-14 and 14 on the year, 1-0 this season, and 7-5 lifetime against the Dodgers. And Don Sutton for the Dodgers, 17 and 16, and one and one for the Giants. Our pregame sponsors are pleased to present to our guests a gift certificate from White Front Stores for Liberty Records, who feature such recording stars as Johnny Man Singers, Dave Fell Singers, and Tommy Garrett and the 50 Guitar. Stay tuned now for exciting Dodger baseball: the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. Dodger warm-up show was brought to you by the good sound of KTAR and by your local Elizondo Toyota dealer who invites you to take a test drive soon. Get your hands on a Toyota, you'll never let go. Get your hands on a Toyota and you'll never let go. You can charge your purchases and take many months to pay at Richard D. Mulvane, Post Office Box 155, Goodyear, where you can use your Arizona Bank Bank America card. Ranch Trailer Sales has a brand new home. Ranch Trailer Sales, now celebrating their big grand opening at their brand new location, 4330 East Van Buren in Phoenix. Drop by now, register for free door prices. Now through Sunday, Ranch Trailer Sales celebrates their big grand opening, and you are invited to drop by and see Arizona's most complete display of mobile homes. Ranch Trailer Sales is Arizona's distributor for Detroiters, General, and the Flamingo Mobile Home. And right now, you can see the preview showing of the 1970 models and save as never before as Ranch Trailer Sales closes out the 69 models. Ranch Trailer Sales also has a small selection of used mobile homes. Ranch Trailer Sales, Arizona's oldest and largest mobile home dealer, serving mobile Arizona since 1951. Come join the fun and savings as Ranch Trailer Sales celebrates their big grand opening at their brand new location, 4330 East Van Buren, Phoenix. Ranch Trailer Sales, Arizona's mobile home headquarters. K-T-A-R Phoenix K-T-A-R Dodger Baseball is on the air.
Dodger Baseball, brought to you by your Union 76 dealer, who invites you to fill up with Royal 76 Premium, the gasoline design for today's kind of driving. By Farmer John Meats, easternmost in quality, westernmost in flavor. And by Berkey, the comfortable beer. <laughs> This is Jerry Doggett along with Ben Scully. Here we are at beautiful Dodger Stadium for the game between the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. This broadcast presented with the permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written permission of the Los Angeles Dodgers Incorporated is prohibited. Tonight, the Dodgers and the Giants, and for the Giants, they're still alive. A game and a half behind Atlanta before the game gets underway. They will now be two behind since Atlanta has won its game against... Uh, San Diego at Atlanta and the magic number for the Braves now is four they have won seven straights and the pressure now is right on the Giants the Dodgers will be trying to sidetrack them here tonight with Don Sutton going against Gaylord Perry we'll have the batting orders coming up for you in a moment right now let's listen to this message you know to be a winner in sports or in anything for that matter you have to work hard at it and Farmer John really worked hard at it to bring you sausage so good it was the gold medal winner of the California State Fair he goes all the way back to the corn country for fine, fresh, eastern corn-fed pork for his sausage. And then he brings the pork out here live. And it's U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. Well, that's why Farmer John's sausage always has a nice, rosy, fresh glow to it. Never looks gray like sausage made from pork, chipped in frozen or cold storage. And Farmer John makes his sausage to an old-time Western recipe with only natural herbs and spices. So there's a wonderful Western flavor in every marvelous meaty morsel. Enjoy Strictly Fresh Farmer John Sausage for breakfast or supper soon. It's the sausage Farmer John works hard to make the best tasting you ever tried, and you'll agree. It's the East and most in quality, and the West and most in flavor. Farmer John Sausage. Here are the lineups now for the ball game. For San Francisco, Tito Fuentes will be at third base. Ron Hunt at second. Willie Mays in center. Willie McCovey at first base. Bobby Bonds in right field. Bob Berta will be the left fielder. Jack Hyatt catching. Hal Lanier at short. And Gaylord Perry will be on the mound doing the pitching. His record, 17 wins, 14 losses. For the Dodgers, Maury Wills at short. Ted Sizemore at second. Willie Davis in center. Willie Crawford in right. Jim Lefevre at third. Len Gabrielson in left. Wes Parker at first. Tom Haller catching. And Don Sutton is the pitcher. Don 17 and 16. One and one with the Giants this year and three and ten lifetime. Down in his last game was pitching a gym at Cincinnati, but lost it by a score of two to one. We'll be underway with the ball game in just a moment. We have on the message board the announcement that we'll have the great Bohemian Ed Hewitt, a Giant fan, to sing the national anthem.
announcement of our national anthem, waiting now for the Dodgers to take the field. Ed Hewitt singing the anthem. He is a giant fan. Now the Dodgers go out. Defensively, Haller will be the catcher, Sutton to do the pitching, Parker at first, Sizemore at second, Wills at short, and Lefebvre at third. Gableson in left, Davis in center, and in right field, Willie Crawford. The Dodgers trying to snap a seven-game losing streak, which began when they went into San Francisco last weekend, and they're trying to derail the Giants now in this three-game series here at Dodger Stadium. The Giants play three here, three at home against San Diego. Meanwhile, San Diego is playing at Atlanta, and Atlanta, after a bit of a scare in the first couple of innings, came roaring back to win that game and get their seventh straight win and now reduce their magic number to four. The Braves lead the Giants as of the moment by two games, one on the loss side. Atlanta, ten runs on 15 hits. San Diego, four runs, eight hits, and the Padres jumped out to a three-run lead at the end of two innings of play. But Atlanta exploded for six in the third with a grand slammer by Cepeda, another one by Boyer, another one by Aaron, and they went on to win 10 to 4 as Phil Necro got his 22nd win. The Reds trying to hang in there. They won a doubleheader from Houston, but they lost last night, and that was a severe blow to them. But as long as Atlanta keeps winning, there's not much the others can do about it. Houston had one hit in the first game as Maloney pitched his fifth one-hitter of his career. 3 nothing final in the first, and it was 4-3, Cincinnati won the second. More a little later on, ready to play ball now here at Dodger Stadium. The Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. And now for the play-by-play, here's Ben Scully. Thank you, Jerry. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good evening to you, wherever you may be. The Dodgers and the Giants, the Braves have already won. And it'll be Tito Fuentes, followed by Ron Hunt and Willie Mays. The Dodgers have several things going for them to bear down tonight. The first one to what is a strike on one. Perhaps the number one feeling would be the natural animosity that the Dodgers have for the Giants and vice versa. And secondly would be professional pride. Strike one pitch on the way. Change outside the knuckleball gets away from Haller. One ball and one strike. Plus the fact that the Dodgers have been clobbered at candlestick. They lost seven out of nine there. So even though for the Dodgers, their pennant race is over and their war is over, their battle is not completely over. What is waiting in the 1-1 pitch on the way? Low and inside, ball two, two and one. Don Sutton, spurred by a chance to win his 18th. Gaylord Perry will be trying to win his 18th and keep the Giants in the race. Now the 2-1 pitch on the way. Over, breaking ball at the knees. Strike two, and Tito a little unhappy on the call. Takes a good walk away from the plate. And Ed Vargo turns and says something to him. Tito hitting 269. Switch hitting third baseman. He has done a fine job for the Giants at third. The outfield shading him to left. Now Sutton's 2-2 pitch is very high, one-handed by Tommy Haller. So he's gone all the way to Tito Fuentes. Wes Westrom coaching at first, Ossie Virgil at third. Parker Sizemore, Wills Lefevre, Gabrielson, Davis, and Crawford in the outfield. And the 3-2 pitch to Tito is a fly ball to Willie Davis. He started to go back on the ball, now has to hustle in and makes the catch. So Tito Fuentes, a fly ball to Willie Davis, one away. The batter, Ron Hunt. Well, there's that name, Cepeda, again in the headlines. Orlando Cepeda had a grand slam home run tonight to make a tremendous contribution to Atlanta's victory. And Cepeda, who was such a big man for the Cardinals, is now coming up with the key hits for Atlanta. Here's Ron Hunt. Hunt batting 261. Don Sutton ready, and the breaking ball is low, ball one. John Kibler at first, Andy Olson at second, Al Barlick on the line at third. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way, fastball, high and outside, ball two. So Sutton went all the way to Fuentes and got him and comes right back behind to Ron Hunt. Willie Mays on deck. For the Giants, they are now involved in the numbers game. 
their number four. The two-hole pitch, high, ball three, three and oh. Any combination of Atlanta victories and or giant defeats, totaling four. And the lights will go out in the Western Division. Three and oh to count to Ron Hunt. Sutton into the windup and delivers. High, ball four. And that's a tough way to do it. Walk Hunt to now look at Mays and McCovey. home runs, 58, runs batted in. Just the start of the evening, we have one out in the first inning, Ron Hunt has just walked, and now Mays at the plate. Sutton looks at first, works a fastball, it's grounded to Wills. He has a bad hop to off his glove, go over his head and land behind him, and everybody's saved. It'll be a base hit, the ball took a bad hop. When it left the bat, it looked like it had a chance to be a possible double play. And as Will set himself, the ball almost struck him on the forehead. He got his glove up, and it went over his head. So two on with one out, and here comes Willie McCovey. And Sutton decides he had better tie the laces of his right shoe. Willie McCovey hitting 326. He has 44 home runs, 123 RBIs. That means he did not do anything in either department against San Diego. Sutton at the belt. Has a look at the runners. And the pitch to Big Willie is swung on and missed. 4-1. McCovey had those figures when the Dodgers last saw him at Candlestick. 44 home runs, 123 runs batted in. And, of course, if he didn't increase either of those columns, you can understand almost at a glance why the Padres took two out of three from the Giants. He's the machine that makes him go. Strike one pitch to Willie. is in the dirt, scooped out by Haller, and they count one ball and one strike. On deck, Bobby Bond. Ron Hunt, short lead at second base. Willie Mays at first. One out. Just the start of the game. Wills bird dogging Hunt. The pitch to McCovey is a slow curve, low and inside. Ball two. Two and one. Sutton got Quintus on a fly ball. Then he walked Ron Hunt. He got a tough break on May's ground ball instead of at least a force. It took a bad hop and went for a base hit. So now he has to contend with McCovey, and pitchers have not found out an enviable chore all year. Sutton ready, Don checks in the 2-1 pitch. Slow and away, ball three. So now Don Sutton is one pitch away from loading him up. There's a lot of trouble on deck. Bobby Barnes, he has 31 home runs and 84 runs batted in. Three and one to Willie McCovey. Sutton ready. Checks the runners, whirls, and goes to Wills high, and Hunt back to the back standing up. That almost caught Ron on the back of the helmet. In fact, we say helmet, but the Giants do not do what the Dodgers do. Most Dodgers, and for that matter, most players in the league now, run bases wearing the helmet. But neither Giant runner, Mays, nor Hunt wearing a helmet. Three and one to McCovey. Sutton checking, the runners do not go, and the pitch is low, ball four, to load them up. So Don Sutton starts out with the bases loaded, one out, and the rage of Riverside, Mr. Bobby Barnes coming out. Bobby Barnes has struck out 178 times this year to establish a new all-time strikeout mark, but... He also has 24 doubles, 6 triples, 31 home runs, and 84 RBIs. Sutton delivers, and is a one-hopper through into left field. Hunt will score. Mays on a bad leg is just coming to the plate, but he'll score, and it is 2 to nothing in favor of the Giants. And Don Sutton, who has a poor record against the Giants, is in trouble to them already. Don Lifetime has beaten the Giants only three times and lost to them ten. And he's down 2-0 right away. So Barnes picks up 
two RBIs to give him 86. And the Giants are out in front. Here's Bob Berta. Berta, you don't see him in the starting lineup too often. Bob hitting 236. He has six home runs, two of them as a pinch hitter. 27 runs batted in. Left hand hitter. He played first base and the outfield. Sutton ready, and the fast one is popped in the air, foul or third. Lefevre hustling to the edge of the Dodger dugout, no play. It's behind the dugout in the seat. 0 oh 1. The Mets have got the winning habit. They rolled along and got another shutout from Jerry Kuzman. They beat Philadelphia 5 to nothing. And Don Clendenin, who had two home runs in their pennant clincher, it is 16. The Braves won handily over San Diego. Here's the strike one pitch to Berta over at the knees for a strike. 0 oh 2. This is a very big weekend. The Braves must continue to win against San Diego. And then the Giants have to avoid being hurt here. And then, early next week, the Giants play San Diego, and the Braves will play Cincinnati. 0-2 oh, to count to Berta. Sutton to the plate on the hands, and it's foul to the screen. Willie McCovey at second. Bobby Barnes at first. One out. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Sutton, right foot on the rubber. Tommy Haller blinking a few signs out to him, and now Don straightens up. Has a look at the runners in the strike two pitch. Curve ball, swung on and missed strike three. The bird is strikes out for the second out. And the batter will be Jack Hyatt. Number seven, Jackie Hyatt. Jackie Hyatt had a tough year. The last time the Giants were here at Dodger Stadium, Jack was back home in San Francisco in the hospital with ulcers. We did see him at Candlestick during the recent series. Hyatt has seven home runs, 30 RBIs, but he's been in only 64 games. Sutton delivers. Slider for a strike on one. Dick Dietz, who does a lot of catching, has a bad leg as a result of a collision with Johnny Bench of Cincinnati. Oh, and one to Jackie Hyatt. Sutton at the belt, back he comes, fastball low, one and one. Willie McCovey at second base, Bobby Barnes at first, two nothing Giants, two out. Sutton ready, another look at McCovey and the one one pitch on the way is over for strike, one and two. The play that scrambled Sutton here in the first inning was the ground ball hit by Mays right to Wills, it appeared, and then it suddenly took the bad hop. One and two, the count to Jackie Hyatt. Sutton looks at his runners, the young right-hander ready and delivers, and the breaking ball is down and away, ball two. Two and two. Two and two, the count to Jack Hyatt. Sutton ready and delivers, and it's taken just inside. So he set him for a fastball and missed off the hands with it. And with two out, he's gone all the way to Hyatt. The runners will be going. Joe Moeller gets up in the Dodger bullpen and is throwing back a Sutton. Don straightens up. Runners ready, and there they go, and the pitch is swung on and missed strike three. But the Giants get two runs, two hits, and lead two, and the score at the end of half an inning, Giants two, Dodgers coming up. Kemper headquarters in the Valley is Camp West Industries, 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix, just north of Thomas Road. Camp West, featuring two outstanding lines of quality campers, Tramper Camper and Travette, and 75 different models to choose from. They've got a camper to suit your needs, your budget, with prices starting as low as $189. Both Tramper Camper and Trevette feature a lifetime warranty for as long as you own the camper. See Tramper Camper with all the luxury of more expensive campers. And Trevette, the Cadillac of campers, and you do-it-yourselfers, you'll find everything you need to build your camper at Camp West. Aluminum skins and windows, ice boxes, stoves, water pumps, water pressure systems, you name it, if they don't have it, they'll get it for you. And remember, for quality, price, and service, see Camp West Industries. 
easy to get to from anywhere in the valley. They're at 2802 Grand Avenue, just north of Thomas Road and a block west of Black Canyon Freeway. Camp West is open six days a week, Monday through Friday till 9, Saturday till 5. Remember, before you buy your camper, see Camp West, your volume camper dealer. All right, we've played a half inning. The Giants are off to a two-run lead as Gaylord Perry gets ready to go. Pitching to the Dodgers, Will Sizemore and Davis as we go to play here in the bottom of the first. Back to play, here's Finn. All right, Jerry, Gaylord Perry trying to win his 18th, loosing up to Jackie Hyatt. In the infield, Willie McCovey and Ron Hunt, Hal Lanier, and Tito Fuentes. In the outfield, Bob Berta in left, Willie Mays in center, Bobby Barnes in right. And the Dodgers home tonight. It'll mark the return of Maury Will, then Ted Sizemore, and Willie Davis. Short shot, Maury. Will. Leading it on. Gaylord Perry into the windup, and the pitch to Wills, a breaking ball low, ball one. Maury hitting 275 for the year. He has stayed over 300 ever since being with the Dodgers. This would be his 100th game as a Dodger this year. Here's the 1 0 pitch on the way to Wills. He takes, gets the corner for a strike, one and one. Giants have won 11 of 15, and they've done it in both places. They won 7 out of 9 at Candlestick. They've won 4 out of 6 here at Dodger Stadium. Now the 1-1 pitch on the way. A bouncer over the mound. Ron Hunt charging, picks it up, and can't make a play. So Ron Hunt gets the infield single, and the batter will be Ted Sizemore. On the message board, a special announcement, the Dodger Stadium auto gates and turnstiles will open tomorrow at 10.30. Don Drysdale's ceremonies begin at 12.30. It's a 1.15 game. Hope you'll be with us on Don Drysdale Day. Here is Ted Sizemore hitting 272. Sizemore with three home runs, hit them all in Atlanta, 45 RBIs. The throw to first sends Will back on his hands and knees. Morey has been resting for this series. So he should feel a little frisky now as he hops off the bag, McCovey holding. Wills has stolen 40 bases. He bluffs, and the pitch inside, and they were a little mixed up there. Hyatt was going away from the plate for a pitch out, and Perry got the pitch inside. One ball and no strikes to count. Perry up on top and at the belt. Another look over at Wills. He doesn't go. Sizemore tries to go to right field, but instead pops it up to Ron Hunt, and we'll see if he lets it drop. He does. He taps the ball, throws to second for a force on Wills, and the play goes 4-6. You could read Hunt's mind easily then. He just wanted to get Wills off the base pass. And with one out, Willie Davis coming up. Willie Davis... Hitting 312 with 11 home runs, 59 runs batted in. So Willie Davis waiting. Willie Crawford on deck. So young Willie Crawford, that is, hitting in the cleanup spot tonight. The pitch to Davis low and inside, backhanded by Hyatt. One ball, no strikes. Ted Sizemore has stolen five bases in seven tries. He's held on by Willie McCovey. Cincinnati swept the doubleheader from Houston, winning the nightcap four to three after Jim Maloney got them started pitching a one-hitter. Little foul off to the left out of play. Cincinnati winning that first game three to nothing. For Maloney, his one-hitter tonight tied the modern National League record for one-hitters in a career. Jim Maloney now has five of them. Grover Cleveland Alexander and Three Finger Brown had five one-hitters. But Bob Fell is the guy with the all-time record. Pitch to Willie Davis, a bouncer down to short, Lanier waits for it, then feeds to Hunt, and that's all they get, a fours. So Davis aboard, and with two out, the batter will be Willie Crawford. Bob Feller, just to measure his greatness, had 12 one-hitters in his career. That's the Major League mark. In Jim Maloney's one-hitter, Joe Morgan, the little second baseman, had the only hit. All right, here's Willie Crawford. Davis at first, two out. 
2-0 in favor of the Giants. Crawford hitting 253, 11 home runs, 41 RBIs. It's been a long while, if ever, if he's hit cleanup. He takes outside ball one. The second time this year that Willie has hit in the number four spot. So it's a fine mark for him to be in there against the 17-game winner, Gaylord Perry. 1-0. Perry at the belt has a look at Davis. Now works the plate, and it's swung on and missed, 1-1. One and one. He had not hit cleanup at all until our last road trip. They put him in the number four spot in Cincinnati for the first time this year. Wes Parker has more or less carried that load. And now he's in there for the second time tonight. Parker is at the other extreme now. Wes is hitting seventh in the lineup. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Crawford, taken for a strike in the count one and two. When the Dodgers talk about what a fine year this has been, and it has been a fine year, despite the fact they came up short, the tremendous contributions and improvements of Ted Sizemore, Willie Crawford, that's what they really like. There's a ground ball to Hunt. Easy play to Lanier for a force on Davis, and that'll do it. A base hit and then three force plays. No runs, a hit, a man left. And at the end of one, Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Friends of a baseball team could put together a winning streak like Union 76 racing gasoline. Boy, it could clinch the pennant by, well, Memorial Day. The latest 76-powered win was at Sears Point in San Francisco at the Continental 49er for Formula A racing cars. But you don't have to be a racing driver to ride with a winner. Why, be sure to ask any one of over a million drivers who use Royal 76 Premium Gasoline. They know that the perfectly balanced blend of the eight fuels that go into Royal 76 Premium are there for one reason. They're there to assure their cars of the best performance possible for today's kind of driving. Royal 76 Premium, from the same winning team that makes 76 Racing Gasoline. So get a tank full at your Union 76 dealers, where you find the things your car thrives on. And remember, when you're looking for someone to look after you, look up to 76. Before we go to the second inning with the Giants leading 2 to nothing, we have an announcement much more important than any pennant race or any World Series. And we are delighted, thrilled, and happy to congratulate Phyllis and Jim Muley. Jim, the equipment man in the visitor's room, visitor's dressing room here at Dodger Stadium. Today in the San Gabriel Community Hospital, Phyllis Muley, wife of Jim, delivered an eight-pound, nine-ounce baby boy by the name of James Marshall Muley. So young Jim, welcome to the world and to the Dodger family, even though your dad hangs out with them. The first pitch to Hal Lanier's high, ball one. And our heartiest congratulations and love to Phyllis. 1-0, the count to Hal Lanier. Switch hitting, shortstop, batting left-handed. Sutton ready, Don delivers. Half swing, but he held up, and it was high, ball two. Sutton has been wild and high all night. And it cost him a couple of runs in the first inning. Well, if there's some thunder out of Seattle tonight, it means Harmon Killebrew is at it again. He just hit his 48th. He's the big man in the big leagues. Frank Howard is right back up at 47. So Harmon Killebrew hit his 48. 2-0 oh, the count to Hal Lanier. Lanier hitting 228. 35 runs batted in. The next one in there for a strike. 2-1. and one. Giants and Dodgers. First of three. First of their last three. Sutton into the windup, and his 2-1 pitch is a fastball hit to the left of Wills, and another big bounce, and it goes right up over his glove into center field. Well, Maury probably wondering if they've been holding a dance at shortstop, just as he reached out to get the ground ball, and it was only a desperation effort at best. The ball just came up and over the glove and on out into center. And the batter will be Gaylord Perry. Perry has one home run and two RBIs. Right-hand batter in the Dodgers field, and he's up there to bunt. Jim LaFever plays him in on the grass. Sutton hands on his knees, now straightens up. Has a look at first and delivers, and the front by Perry. Sutton picks it up, looks at second, and then goes to first. 
So the sacrifice works, a 1-4 play, and with one out, it'll bring up the leadoff man, Tito Fuentes. Fuentes flied to center in the first inning. Sutton went three and two with him before he flied out. Tito batting left-handed. Sutton ready, comes to the plate, and a fastball is hit into right field for a base hit. Crawford charging, and they're going to hold Lanier. And a perfect throw to the plate. So Willie Crawford charging the base hit, and Sutton is in trouble again, runners at first and third with one out. Well, we mentioned before that Jim and Phyllis Muey are now five parents of a baby boy. And Don Sutton and his wife must be thinking thoughts of the stork about now. Right field for a base hit. Crawford charging, and they're going to hold Vanier. And a perfect throw to the plate. So Willie Crawford charging the base hit, and Sutton is in trouble again. Runners at first and third with one out. Well, we mentioned before that Jim and Phyllis Muey are now five parents of a baby boy. And Don Sutton and his wife must be thinking thoughts of the stork about now. Don and his wife figure that go in about three weeks. They'll be parents for the first time. First and third, one out, and Ron Hunt the batter. Wills comes in from short to talk to Sutton, and Haller's going out there. One of the few times you'll see a, a catcher beyond the mound, but Tommy keeps on going to get to the meeting. All right, Haller now comes back. Wills, after talking to Sutton and Haller, now talks to Sizemore. The Dodgers have several things on their mind, of course. Tito Fuentes has good running speed. Ron Hunt can play hit and run. He's always up there with a the play in the works. Willie Mays on deck. So the Dodgers trying to cover all the angles, and now Sutton going to work. Allen here at third. Tito Fuentes at first. One out. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Sutton at the belt. Has a look at the runners, delivers, fastball on the inside corner for a strike. On one. Don Sutton, 17 victories, 16 defeats, one and one with the Giants, but lifetime, three and ten. Hunt waiting, chokes on the bat. Sutton delivers, fast one swung on and missed, and it looked like Hunt was trying to go to right field. And Hallen now out to talk to Sutton again. 0 oh and 2 the count. Sutton has never beaten the Cubs. The Cubs and the Giants have really worn him out in his few years in the big leagues. I forget his record now, but he lost at Wrigley Field his last time. It's something like 0 oh and 13. We'll check and see what it was. 0-2 oh, the count to Ron Hunt. Sutton, leaning on his knees, nods yes, now set at the belt. Looks at the runners, the strike two pitch. Ron swings and misses strike three. Before Mays, let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. This is KTAR Radio Phoenix. Appliances for cooking or looking, freezing or opening, cleaning or storing, all can be found at Western Auto Associates, 9155 West Van Buren, Tolleson, where you can use your Arizona Bank, Bank America. Here's Willie Mays with runners at first and third and two out. Giants leading the Dodgers two to nothing in the second. Sutton set at the belt, has a look at the runners and delivers, and the pitch is low to Mays. Ball one, one and oh. Next one is swung on a miss, one and one. Sutton was 0-13 against the Cubs back in July. We're talking about a club that really gave him a bad time. The next one is swung on and missed, one and two. He 
He finally beat the Cubs for the only time on the 10th of August. Here's the 1-2 pitch on the way. Bouncer foul. So Don Lifetime is 1-13 with the Cubs. And he is 3-10 with the Giants. So that's pretty tough to have four wins and 23 defeats against two teams. They have really given him a bad time. Mays waiting, 1-2 the count. Lanier standing at third. What is at first? Two out. Two-nothing Giants. Don straightens up, set at the belt. The one-two pitch to Willie Mays. Popped in the air. Out to get it is Sizemore. He's waiting and waiting. He's got it. So Mays pops up, and the Giants leave runners at first and third at the end of an inning and a half. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. comfortable kind of beer. Think of Bergie. This comfortable quality that Bergie's got is really unique. Comes from being brewed with soft water. Bergie's comfortable so you can enjoy that fine beer taste. Glass after cold, wet, beautiful glass. second inning with the Giants leading the Dodgers two to nothing. Two runs, four hits, and no errors for the Giants. No runs, one hit, and no errors for the Dodgers. Gaylord Perry and Don Sutton. The Dodgers in the bottom of the second will have Jim LaFever, Glenn Gabrielson, and Wes Parker. Marshall has now gone into right field. When Mays scored in the first inning, he was dragging his leg, literally. And now after making out, they've taken him out. So Marshall goes into the ball game, and Bonds takes over in center. So Berta is in right, Marshall is in left, and Bonds in center. Perry's first pitch is low to Jimmy LaFever. Jim hitting 232. He has four home runs, 38 runs batted in. The next one is rolled up along the first baseline and kicks foul right over to Gilliam. And they count one ball and one strike. One strike, the count to Jimmy LeFever. Perry into the windup. Gaylord ready, delivers, slow breaking ball over for a strike in the count one and two. Perry reading Hyatt. Gaylord is 17 and 14, 1 and 0 with the Dodgers. Fastball is hit and backhanded by Fuentes. The ball was not hit hard. It was hit off the end of the bat. Lefebvre was a little bit out in front of it. And Fuentes was able to rather easily just cross his body and backhand the ball. One away, and here is Len Gabrielson. Len Gabrielson, left-hand hitting outfielder, batting 276. One home run, 17 runs batted in. On deck, Wes Parker. First pitch to Gabe, inside. Perry comes back with a change. 
Gets it low. One and one to count. Len Gabrielson, West Parker on deck. Two to nothing Giants here in the second inning. Perry into the windup now, and Gaylord's 1-1 pitch. Fastball is hit by the mound. Hunt to his right, up with it, off balance, throwing plenty of time. So Hunt throws out Gabriel, send two out in the second inning, and Wes Parker coming up. Number 28, first base, Wes Parker. You would know instinctively that the Dodgers and Wes Parker are having problems when you look at the lineup and see Parker hitting seven. Wes, who was carrying the load along with Andy Costco all year, always hitting right around the number four spot. But his average is now at 279. So he's dipped below the 280 mark for the first time in a long time. Perry delivers and gets a strike. On one. Parker had a big bat, and then, of course, remember, underwent the appendectomy. Then came back and surprised everybody with how well he played immediately after the length of time he was on the disabled list. Here's the strike one pitch on the way. Breaking ball low, one and one. But suddenly, that great spurt stopped, and it's been a struggle for West now, as reflected in that 279 average. One and one to count. Gaylord Perry into the windup. Right-hander delivers, and it's sprayed foul off to the left of the plate upstairs, and the count one and two. Unless you are with the ball club day after day, unless you, you realize what goes on in the course of a year, you don't truly appreciate a day-after-day player. You think, oh, well, how tough can it be? It's not like football. You don't get slammed around too often. Boy, 162 plus about 30 exhibition games, it can be quite a grind. Pitch inside. you really got to be strong to play Major League Baseball every day. In fact, I remember reading the interview with young Steve Soggy, the former SC quarterback, when he went to Albuquerque with the Dodger Farm Club. Perry ready in the 2-2 pitch to Parker. Swung on and missed, strike three. And the big thing that Soggy said, the big shock to him, was suddenly to play every day. And boy, that, you think you've played ball, but when you play every day, there's another story. At the end of two, the Giants two, the Dodgers nothing. Needless to say, baseball is the favorite spectator sport of millions of Westerners. But when it comes to a participation sport, well, it's hard to beat a feast of lean, meaty spare ribs, barbecued to perfection. And when I say spare ribs, well, I mean Farmer John spare ribs. Because Farmer John spare ribs, like Farmer John pork roasts and Farmer John pork chops, are as fresh as you can buy. Farmer John brings fresh eastern corn-fed pork out here live. Then it's U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. Most other packers ship their pork in frozen or cold storage. So, Farmer John pork is always strictly fresh. One day soon, get the coals burning red in your barbecue and put a batch of lean, luscious Farmer John spare ribs on the rotisserie. Boy, that's the day you'll discover how good spare ribs really are. And remember, whether it's spare ribs, pork roast, or chops, always insist on Farmer John pork. Gold medal winner at the California State Fair. Through two innings, the Giants, two runs, four hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, one hit, and no errors. Let's go to the third. More play-by-play, here's Jerry Dock. Hi, Billy, and McCovey comes on. Willie drew a walk his first time up, 44 home runs, 123 runs batted in. Aaron has caught him in home runs. Henry hit his 44th tonight. Both players, oddly enough, wear number 44. Pitch comes high to McCovey. One ball, no strikes. Sutton has been in trouble his first two rounds. He yielded two runs in the first inning and then escaped in the second with runners at first and third with one out. Big Willie McCovey up there waiting. Bobby Bonds on deck now. The wind up and the pitch on the way. In for a strike and it's one and one. Mays had to retire his leg. Right knee acting up on him again. Willie had to come out. One ball and one strike. McCovey waits. Now again the wind up and the pitch on the way. Fastball comes low. Ball two. Two and one. Two and one the reading. Now Sutton checking signs again. 
Now the wind-up man, the pitch on the way to him. A swing and a bouncing ball to first base. Parker there will run to the bag himself. And McCovey is out one away. One up and one down to the batter, Bobby Bond. Bobby Bonds at bat, single to left, his first time up. Here's the windup now and the pitch on the way to Bobby. He drove in the runs with a single to left, takes the pitch low and inside, ball one. One over the count, we're in the third inning. One ball, no strikes, one out. Curve is low. Ball two. Two or nothing now to Bobby Bonds. Bobby has struck out 178 times, and he asked us on the bench before the game, he says, did you notice my record? <laughs> He's kind of laughing about it sheepishly. And don't worry about that, Bobby. You'll have a lot of other records that'll be very good ones. There's a swing and a miss, two and one. Strangely enough, when Bobby Bonds set the record for the most strikeouts, in a season by a major league player. He was struck out by a childhood buddy. Mike Corkins of San Diego struck him out. And he and Mike grew up together. Here's a swing and a miss strike to two and two. Mike had been in the minors and just recalled recently by San Diego. They're both from Riverside and they've been playing baseball together since they were 13 years old. And so they came face to face in San Diego the other night and Mike Corkins struck out Bobby Bonds as Bobby set the new record. But he also has some other marks he can be proud of. There's a swing and a miss, strike three. Bonds goes down on strike. That's strikeout number four for Don Sutton. Bob Berta. Brings to bat Bob Berta, who now is playing in right field. Bonds has 31 home runs, 84 runs batted in, 42 stolen bases, and he's just beginning his career. So the strikeouts will diminish as he goes along. But right now, a little bit disturbing to him. Two outs, Berta, left-hand batter waiting. A bouncing ball towards second. Sizemore, big hop. Throw to first in time, and the inning is over. So Sutton has a 1-2-3 inning in the third. Three up and three down, and the score at the end of two of the happenings of life. The Giants, two, and the Dodgers, nothing. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln lost his home because of defective land titles? This famous American attributed his family's move to Indiana to difficulty in land titles. Three times, Abraham Lincoln's father, Thomas, bought farms in Kentucky, and each time, he had legal difficulties with the title to the farm he thought he owned. These land transactions were enough to make a man seek a country where he could be sure of a good title, and Thomas Lincoln had come to the conclusion that Indiana offered such an opportunity. We at Arizona Title, in pointing to this bit of Lincoln history, note that it was from experience such as Lincoln's father suffered that the American industry of insuring land titles has grown. Hidden hazards may be attached to real estate. Forgeries, faulty surveys, hidden liens, conveyances by a minor or mentally incompetent person, the false representation of ownership. These, and many more, may cloud the title to land. Be secure. When you buy real estate, insist on a title insurance policy from Arizona Title. Arizona Title is synonymous with security. That's their business. And a happy birthday. One. <laughs> Yes, sir. Little Aaron is one year old already. It was just last year. The Dodgers were in Atlanta. Then he had to come home, and he was here for the birth of his daughter, Aaron. So she's one year old today. And a happy return to Aaron. And here we go now to the third with Haller, Sutton, and Wills coming on. Haller stepping in, batting 264 with six home runs and 39 runs batted in. Sutton on deck and Wills to follow. Gaylord Perry working for the Giants, trying to keep them alive. They trail Atlanta at the moment by two games. They need to win to move it back to a game and a half. If they lose, it'd be two and a half. Atlanta's number now is four over San Francisco and two to eliminate Cincinnati. The Reds want a doubleheader doing all they can, but... Uh, the Braves just keep on winning. They've won seven straight now. Here's a fastball for strike one and one. The last time Atlanta lost was here in Dodger Stadium. They went on to San Diego to win three, to Houston to win three, so they won six on the road. Now go home and beat San Diego tonight. 
first of a three-game series. They wind up with two against Cincinnati on Tuesday and Thursday. Breaking ball is outside. Ball two. Two and one now. Haller hitting against Gaylord Perry. The game in the third inning. The Giants picked up two in the first on a walk. An infield hit a walk and a single by Bobby Bonds. Two and one. Here's the windup now. Perry's pitch. Haller fouls it away. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Nice crowd on hand tonight. Somewhere around 35,000 30, to take in the game. And don't forget tomorrow, Don Drysdale Day. Game time, 1.15. And the pregame ceremonies will begin at 12.30. So you might come out and say so long to one of the great Dodgers of all time. Don Drysdale. 2-2 two, two pitch. The line drive hit foul down the left field line. A couple of other big-name pitchers will be on hand to take part in the ceremonies. One, Sal Magley and Sandy Koufax. Two and two. That's Tom Haller. Waiting now. Now the wind-up and the pitch on the way to Tom. A swing and a miss and a sinker, and he struck him out. The second strikeout for Perry... And the batter will be Don Sutton. So here's Sutton coming on in the third. Don Sutton. Now the wind-up and the pitch on the way to Don. A swing and a pop-up on the first baseline. Willie McCovey on the line right at the back now. Comes down and makes the catch a step in foul territory. So Sutton fouls out. And the batter will be Maury Wills. Maury Wills coming on. And Will's the batter. Morey had an infield hit. That's the only hit the Dodgers have off Perry. Now the wind-up and the pitch on the way. Morey takes a strike on a fastball from Perry. McCovey at first and Fuentes at third playing in. And Fuentes now moves in another step or two. The Giants lead two to nothing as we play in the third inning. Gaylord Perry going through the motions. And the windup and the pitch on the way is up high for a ball, and the count goes to one and one. One ball, one strike. It is one and one with two outs. Haller struck out, Sutton fouled out to first. Now the pitch to Wills. Taken low for a ball, and the count goes to two and one. Two balls, one strike with two men away. Once again, Gaylord Perry checking his sign. And the windup and the pitch to Wills. Outside ball three, three and one. So Wills waiting now has a look at third base coach Danny Ozark. The Dodgers with six home games left, three here with the Giants, and then three with Houston next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Three and one now. Pitch on the way to Maury. And he takes low ball four on with a walk. The first walk given up by Gaylord Perry brings to bat Ted Sizemore. Here's Sizemore at bat now. Wills on at first base on the pitch to him, bounce wide of third base. Fuentes there makes the play to second in time and Wills out to retire the side. So Sizemore grounds into a fourth play. And the Dodgers are down in the third. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left in the score at the end of three innings to play. Giants two and the Dodgers nothing. Win cash. Play beat the dealer at Union 76 every day of the week. Plenty of 
cash left to win. Plenty of dealers left to beat. Beat the dealer is still going strong at Union 76. Odds are that thousands of people will win from a dollar to a thousand or more each week. When you're looking for a game with the winning numbers on every card, look up at 76. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Licensed drivers only. Complete price information at participating 76 stations. Let's go along into the fourth inning of the ball game with the Giants coming up now, leading by a score of two to nothing. We'll be going back to play, and here's Vince. All right, Jerry, in the fourth with the Giants holding on to the two to nothing lead. The second time tonight, and it is roughly the fourth or fifth time in the last two meetings between the Dodgers team and Gaylord Perry. Walter Alston is, well, I'd say appealing. I think arguing would be a better word. And it's very simple. In no sense ducking the issue. The Dodgers and Alston claim that Perry throws a spitter and they'd like to have him cut it out. It's a... Uh, they went through that when Drysdale was pitching for the Dodgers. And, of course, you remember that they almost x-rayed Don. The pitch is low to high at ball one. So Alston, I'm sure, is saying to the umpires that, the, okay, if you wanted to examine our pitcher and every time he pitched, it's about time you started to examine the gentleman from North Carolina. Here's the strike one pitch to Jack Hyatt. Fouled away in the count 0-2. One ball and one strike. The count to Jackie Hyatt. Sutton into the windup. Don ready and delivers. And the breaking ball is outside. Ball two. Two and one. Here's a 2-1 pitch on the way. A fly ball to right field. Willie Corbett going back a few steps. Turns and makes the catch for the out. So fly ball to right, one away, and here is Hal Lanier. Lanier, Lanier single to center in the second inning. Hal one for one. The outfield playing him to go the other way, so Willie Davis slapping into left center with Gabrielson guarding the foul line. Willie Crawford up a step or two in right. And Sutton ready to go back to work. Don into the windup and delivers. Fastball low, ball one. One and oh. Ed Vargo, the plate umpire, and he was the one twice who discussed, I'm sure, Gaylord Perry with Walter Olsen. Here's the one oh pitch on the way. Fastball swung on and foul tipped in the count one and one. All of the National League games are over. Most of the American League games have gone to bed. In case you missed the scores, we'll duck them in for you. Although at this stage, this game, Atlanta and Cincinnati are the games to watch. A tap up along the third baseline, and Howard picks it up and throws much too late. Sutton made a rather circuitous route towards the ball, and it looked like Don was going to surround it. I think Howard expected Don to come straight to it. So then as Howard went around, Sutton appeared to be a little angry at himself. And Hal Lanier gets a gift single, and his second of the night, the batter will be Gaylord Perry. Atlanta beat San Diego 10-4. to Cincinnati swept the doubleheader from Houston, 3 to nothing and 4-3. to The Mets shut out Philadelphia 5 to nothing. Pittsburgh beat the Cubs 2 to nothing, and the Cardinals beat Montreal 12-1. to The American League, the Angels, beat Oakland 5-3. to Minnesota leading Seattle 2-0. There's the bunt back towards Sutton. He's got a play to Wills. They get him over to first base. Double play. 1-6-4. Sutton, Wills, Sizemore. No run to hit. Nobody left. And at the end of three and a half innings, Giants 2, Dodgers nothing. Well, I know you've heard it said many times lately, but the development of technology is really staggering, isn't it? We have air-conditioned domes, stadiums, instant TV from anywhere on Earth, and even men on the moon. Boy, things are changing so fast, you wonder what's going to be left that's comfortably familiar. Well, we have a hunch that some of the really good old things, the simple, natural things that make life comfortable, will stay with us right into the 21st century. Take a good cold beer, for instance. 
There's no way they're going to find a substitute for that. And when it's brewed the slow, natural way with soft water, the way Bergie is, well, there's just nothing in the universe that could be more refreshing. Bergie's a comfortable kind of beer. Easy to drink, easy to stay with glass after ice-cold glass. So when you get the feeling that the world is moving just a little too fast for you to keep up with, why not take time out? Open a cold, wet can of Bergie and think about the good things that don't change. Bergie's one of them. Easy-going, comfortable Bergie. It's a good thing to hang on to in this ever-loving, ever-changing world. Bottom of the fourth inning. The Giants, two runs, five hits, no errors. The Dodgers, no runs, just one hit. That was an infield single by Maury Wills. Jim Gilliam talking to John Kibler at first. Danny Ozark is talking to Al Barlick at third. Walter Olson has already talked to Ed Vargo. And we'll see now whether the umpires will start examining the pitchers. We say we're pretty sure that's the reason why Olson has been out there a couple of times. Here's Willie Davis to start it off. He'll be followed by Crawford and then Lefebvre. Willie Davis hit into a force play in the first inning. He's 0 for 1. Gaylord Perry, right foot on the rubber, into the windup, and delivers. And it's low and inside, ball one. One and all the count. Now the 1-0 pitch on the way. Willie fouls it off to the right as it rolls to the screen and the count one ball and one strike. One pitch on the way. Davis waiting, and the fastball is hit to short. Lanier up with it, sets for the throw, and throws him out. So Willie Davis grounds out, one away. The Dodgers have been able to hit two balls in the air. A line drive by Lefevre and a foul ball by Sutton. And the batter, Willie Crawford. Crawford hit into a forced play in the first inning. Perry with his back to home plate, fussing out there on the hill, now picks up the rosin bag. And the first pitch to Willie Crawford is low, ball one. On the message board, nice to have with us a large group of fans here on a visit of the San Francisco Giants Boosters Club, including Miss Giant Booster 1969 and Kelly. The 1-0 pitch over for a strike, and the count 1-1. One one. Here's the 1-1 one one pitch on the way. Crawford, it's a bouncer over the mound. Lanier in front of the bag picks it up and throws him out. So the Dodgers killing worms, as the ball players say, just hitting ground balls. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. Fun time, relaxation, recreation are the standard bill of fare with Holland of Arizona camera shops. 10735 West, the Oreo Avenue, Sun City, where you can use your Arizona bank, Bank America. KTAR, Phoenix. Here's Jimmy Lefebvre. Hit the soft line drive at Tito Fuentes. 0 for 1. Perry, into the windup. Gaylord ready and delivers. And the first one, line drive down the right field line, foul. Now, ball. Oh, Jimmy will come back and try it again as Bob Berta gets the ball back into Ron Hunt. 0 and 1. Giants 2, they scored him in the first inning with one out. Hunt and Mays got aboard. Hunt walked. Mays hit a ground ball that took a bad hop for a base hit with runners at first and second. And then McCovey walked to load him up, and Barnes singled home two runs. Mays, limping noticeably as he scored on the base hit in the first inning, stayed in the game long enough to have another at bat, and then came out. The first pitch to Jimmy, he fouled. This time he takes one low and away, and the count one and one. One and one to Jim Lefebvre. 
Gaylord Perry into the windup, and the right-hander delivers, and there's another ground ball. Ron Hunt picks it up, throws him out, and that's that. So the Dodgers rolling him on the ground, and at the end of four, Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Friends, baseball season is also the season for picnics, campouts, patio parties, and easy, quick-to-prepare suppers. And Farmer John can add a lot to the fun of your warm-weather feasting with his fresher-than-fresh Farmer John luncheon meats. There's Farmer John all-meat bologna, Farmer John sliced-cooked ham, Farmer John liverwurst, brown schweiger, salami, and many more. Pick your favorites, and they're sure to please, because Farmer John luncheon meats are made with the very best meat, fresh eastern corn-fed pork, and fresh, lean, juicy, homegrown beef. Like all his products, Farmer John luncheon meats are always strictly fresh. And all, remember, were gold medal winners at the California State Fair. You know, Farmer John bacon and Farmer John ham would now discover Farmer John's luscious luncheon meats. Look for Farmer John luncheon meats in the delicatessen section of your favorite market. And if you can't find what you're looking for, be sure to ask for it. And in a loud, clear voice, Farmer John. Two four. The Giants two runs, five hits, no errors. The Dodgers no runs, just one hit. And that was an infield single. Wills hit a slow ground ball and Hunt picked it up and then he couldn't throw it. Tito Fuentes, Ron Hunt, and Dave Marshall in that order. Here's Tito Fuentes. Fly to center, single to right. Two to nothing Giants in the fifth inning. Atlanta already won, so the Giants must win just to keep pace. The pitch to Fuentes foul back. 0-1. The Giants, of course, would hope to stay close, perhaps even gain a little bit, and then hope to move into first place while they're playing San Diego and the Braves are playing the Reds. Strike one pitch on the way. Sinker swung on and missed strike two. And Quintus turns and looks at plate umpire Vargo. Doesn't say anything. Picks up a handful of dirt. 0 oh 2 to count to Tito Quintus. Sutton reading Tom Haller. Now down into the windup and the strike two pitch on the way. Fouled off. So it's still 0 oh 2. to the count of Tito. Sutton ready in the strike two pitch. Sinker swung on and missed and down goes Tito. One away. Here's Ron Hunt. Walk, scored a run, struck out. So Ron Hunt 0 for 1. Ed Vargo saying something to Tommy Haller. Haller turns now to say something and Vargo shakes his head. Hunt 0 for 1. Right hand hitting second baseman. Don Sutton into the windup and delivers and gets a strike on 1. Hunt started the night at 261. Sutton standing back of the rubber. Now Don up on top. Lifts his head. Looks into Haller. Here's the strike one pitch on the way to Ron Hunt. Low and inside. One ball, one strike. The one one pitch to Ron Hunt. Breaking ball low, ball two, two and one. Dodgers and Giants. Tonight, tomorrow afternoon, Don Drysdale Day. Game time at 1.15. Sunday afternoon, the concluding game of the year between these two great rivals. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday night, the Houston Astros. The pitch to hot inside. Three and one to count. Haller blinking out signs. Dave Marshall on deck. 
Sutton into the windup, and the 3 1 pitch on the way is lifted to the right side, and Parker is calling right near the bag and makes the catch. On the message board, it reads Tip of the Dodger Cap to more than 3,000 members of the Southern Area Credit Unions here on the annual Credit Union Night. Once again, they're the number one, right, the largest Dodger fan group visiting us this year. So, welcome to the Southern Area Credit Union members. Two down, and Dave Marshall, left-hand hitter, at the plate. Sutton's fastball, a strike. So Don has settled down after a wobbly first inning. He gave up two runs in the first inning, although, to his credit, a bad hop really set up his problems. He gave up two base hits in the second inning, but got out of it. And he's been rolling along nicely ever since. The next one is strike on the inside corner. 0-2 the count to Dave Marshall. Willie McCovey on deck. Now the strike two pitch on the way in the dirt, ball one, one and two. The Braves won their ball game with San Diego, though Atlanta now has won 90. The Giants trying to win their 88. Here's the one, two pitch on the way. Breaking ball low and inside, ball two, two and two. Tomorrow afternoon, battle of left-handers, Mike McCormick and Claude Osteen. Ground ball up along first base foul, backhanded by Parker, so it's still two and two. Then Sunday afternoon, the concluding game of the series, figures to pit Juan Marichal against Bill Singer, with Singer going after win number 20. Dave Marshall waiting, here's the 2-2 pitch on the way. Call strike three. Fastball had got the inside corner as Marshall got away from it. And down he goes. So the Giants are gone in order. And at the end of four and a half innings, the Giants two and the Dodgers nothing. In 1964, Magnavox invented and introduced automatic fine tuning, which eliminated bothersome and critical picture fine tuning. Now, in 1969, program and with Magnavox, choose from superb fine furniture cabinetry. See the complete line of Magnavox color TVs with total automatic color at Chris Town TV in the Chris Town Shopping Center, 19th Avenue and West Bethany Home Road. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Giants two and the Dodgers nothing. It'll be Len Gabrielson, Wes Parker, and Tom Haller in that order. Len Gabrielson, hitting 276, grounded out in the second inning. The Dodgers have been able to hit only two balls up in the air. One a foul ball by Don Sutton, and the other a soft line drive hit by Jimmy Lefebvre. He hit it off the end of the bat, and Tito Puentes caught it. But Terry has really had his sinker working, and the pitch to Gabe, taken high and away, ball one. Giants two, Dodgers nothing in the fifth. Giants got their two in the first inning. The 1-0 pitch on the way. Gabe has a look, and that's outside. Ball two. Dodgers wish to express their sincere thanks for the cooperation of various charter bus lines for the services provided all summer to the baseball fans coming out to Dodger Stadium. And now many of those fans begin some hand clapping here to see if they can't shake something loose. And Gabe backs out. 2-0. Left-hand hitting Len Gabrielson. Gaylord Perry delivers and is another ground ball. And Ron Hunt picks it up and throws him out. One away. And the batter will be Wes Parker. Walter Olsen is not by nature a restless man. But he is off the bench and he's moved to the middle of the Dodger dugout talking with Red Adams, the Dodger pitching coach. And the batter is Parker. 
Curry into the windup. Right hand to Ruddy and delivers, and there's a ground ball. That's news. Ron Hunt picks it up and throws him out. Two down. In looking at Austin, he looks like he he can only take so much of it. That's the impression he gives as he stands there in the dugout. He has talked to the plate umpire twice. And to say he's a little frustrated and angry, I think, would be an understatement. Two down. Tom Haller struck out in the third inning. Left-hand hitting catcher waiting. Perry into the windup. Gaylord ready, delivers a strike. 0-1. Oh Giants 2, Dodgers nothing, bottom of the fifth. Perry comes right back, 0-1, oh and misses inside. One ball, one strike. Perry back to work. The right hand is 1-1 pitch. Outside, ball two. Two and one. The Dodgers had Wills open up, and he rolled one to Ron Hunt, who picked it up and was unable to throw it. It went as a base hit. They've had just one other man get aboard. That was Wills, who walked in the third. Here's the 2-1 pitch to Tom Haller. Fouled away on the ground. Two and two. The outfielders, with Bobby Barnes in center, flanked by Dave Marshall and Bob Berta, have not had a thing to do. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Two out in the fifth inning. Gaylord Perry into the windup, and the 2-2 pitch on the way. Fouled off to the left, second deck. Gaylord Perry was in that tough extra inning ball game, you remember, that candlestick. Eventually ended when the ball went through Wills. He was not involved in the decision. Here's the 2-2 pitch on the way to Tom Haller. Checked his swing, and it was a little high, ball three. Full count, Don Sutton on deck. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Two out in the fifth inning. Gaylord Perry into the windup, and the 2-2 pitch on the way. Fouled off to the left, second deck. Gaylord Perry was in that tough extra inning ball game, you remember, that candlestick. Eventually ended when the ball went through Wills. He was not involved in the decision. Here's the 2-2 pitch on the way to Tom Haller. Checked his swing, and it was a little high, ball three. Full count, Don Sutton on deck. Three and two, the count to Tommy Haller. Perry into the windup, and Gaylord's 3-2 pitch is hit in the air. Well, that's news. Lanier goes out. He wouldn't want an outfielder to have to work. So Hal makes the catch, and the inning is over. So the Dodgers hit a pop fly, and at the end of five, Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Job training. A Union 76 certified serviceman gets the best training available to any service station dealer anywhere. So don't just let anybody fix your car. Take it to a Union 76 certified serviceman. Friends, when it comes to service, he's somebody. And another reason why, when you're looking for someone to look after you, be sure to look out to 76. Five innings, the Giants two, the Dodgers nothing, saluting our centennial celebrity tonight, the pitching coach of the San Francisco Giants, Larry Jansen. Here's Willie McCovey, and he takes a knuckler for a strike, going one. Willie McCovey walked in the first inning, grounded out in the third, and the Dodgers load up the right side now as Wills goes across the line. McCovey grounds one to Parker, he'll do it himself, one away. That'll bring up Bobby Barnes. Barnes came up with the bases loaded and one out in the first inning and hit a one-hopper into left field to drive in two runs. Those are the only two runs in the game. And the Giants leading two to nothing. We're now in the sixth. The Dodgers have been tied up 
so badly by Gaylord Perry that you now begin to talk about how many balls they've hit in the air. The pitch is strike. They have managed to hit three balls off the ground. He has allowed just one hit. That was a ground ball to Hunt. Ron was unable to throw the ball. Now the strike one pitch to Bobby Bonds. High fly ball into left field. Gabe starts to go back just about on the grass and makes the catch for the out. Two away. That brings up Bob Berta. Left hand hitter started the game in left. He's now in right. He struck out and grounded out. So Berta, 0 for 2. Giants 2, Dodgers nothing, two out bases empty in the sixth. Don Sutton, feet together as he looks in to get a sign. Now the right hand already and delivers. Knuckler, low, ball one. Berta turns to say something to Hallard. Want to know the count. The 1 0 pitch on the way. Inside under the hands, ball two. 2 0 to Berta. Sutton's 2-0 pitch on the way. Fastball is hit to center and deep. Davis going back, but he's there now. Makes the catch, and that's it. So Don Sutton has pitched the minimum of three batters for the last four innings. So his trouble the last time out, do you remember, was in the ninth inning. His trouble tonight was in the first. Giants are gone in order at the end of five and a half. Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Hey, I've got a question for you right now. How many home runs did the Dodgers hit last year? Yeah, I don't uh, have any idea myself. That's a tough question to answer without a record book. But here's a suggestion. While you're thinking about it, pop open a can of Schlitz Malt Liquor. Why Schlitz Malt Liquor? Well, for openers, anything you're doing is a little more enjoyable with Schlitz Malt Liquor because it's got a big, bold kind of taste that zaps through a summer thirst. You see, Schlitz Malt Liquor is specially brewed to keep its boldness even when you ice it way down. It's a fact. Extreme cold actually dulls the taste of a lot of other brews. But it only makes Schlitz Malt Liquor taste that much better, that much bolder. And what else do you drink malt liquor for anyway? Say, next time you're out picking up the goodies for the weekend, don't forget Schlitz Malt Liquor. Just look for the bull on the label. Let you know you've grabbed onto the biggest malt liquor around. Schlitz Malt Liquor. Nobody makes malt liquor like Schlitz. Oh, by the way, the Dodgers hit 67 home runs last year, 42 on the road, 25 at home. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, the Giants leading the Dodgers two to nothing. Both of those runs coming in the first inning, and Gaylord Perry has sure made him stand up. On the message board, nice to have with us a large group of Elks honoring Chief Myers, 89-year-old ex-Major League catcher. And now here's Don Sutton, followed by Maury Wills and Ted Sizemore. Gaylord Perry has three shutouts this year. And he has the Dodgers blank through five innings. Perry into the windup, right hand to ready and delivers, and it's foul to the screen in the count 0 1. Owen 1 to Don Sutton. Perry, right foot on the rubber, into the windup and delivers, and there's a line drive base hit. Perry threw a changeup and got it up around the letters. And Sutton, delighted to see something up that high, and promptly whacked it into left field. The Dodgers have not seen many pitches up there. So a clean single left for Don Sutton, and that brings up Maury Wills. Wills has the infield single and walk. One for one. Sutton off the bag, and Perry delivers a sinker fouled away, 0-1. Gaylord Perry had a lot of trouble, especially up at Candlestick, where the Giants had only lost, I think, their last four games that they had lost up there. He was involved in three of the defeats, but he has pitched well all year. Strike one pitch, poke foul off to the left of the plate, and the count 0-2. Perry's earned run average, second best on the team. It's 2.6. 
there. He has started prior to tonight 37 games and completed 24. That's a lot of completions. The highest on the Dodgers staff would be Singer and Osteen with 15. Perry strike two pitch is a bouncer back over the mound to Lanier. He just steps on second, doubles in a third. Lamoy Wills bounces one right to Hal Lanier for a double play, and with two out, the batter Ted Sizemore. Sizemore twice hit into fourth plays. Two runs, five hits for the Giants. No runs, two hits for the Dodgers. Terry ready and delivers. Fastball on the hands. Foul tipped into Hyatt's mid. 0 and 1. Strike one pitch on the way. Half swing ground ball to Lanier. Hal is up with it. Throws him out, and the Dodgers are gone in the sixth. No runs, one hit, nobody left. And at the end of six, Giants two, Dodgers nothing. Well, you know, unlike a baseball player, Farmer John plays on two sides. Sure, both the meat department side and the delicatessen side of your market. Now, in the meat department, you'll find Farmer John bacon, ham, sausage, and fresh pork. And in the delicatessen section, there's Farmer John all-meat wieners and a complete variety of Farmer John luncheon meats. No matter what Farmer John product you shop for, you can rest assured that it's as fresh as you can buy. Well, that's because Farmer John spends the extra time and money to bring fresh eastern corn-fed pork out here alive. Then it's U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. Well, most other packers ship their pork in frozen or cold storage, so every Farmer John product is strictly fresh. And everyone was a gold medal winner at the California State Fair. Yes, you'll like what Farmer John has for you in your market, whichever side you shop. And if you don't see what you want, well, you be sure to ask for it loud and clear. Farmer John. There's six innings, the Giants two runs, five hits, and no errors. The Dodgers no runs, two hits, and no errors. The pitching duel between Don Sutton and Gaylord Perry. Tomorrow afternoon on Don Drysdale Day, a 1-15 game, it'll be the battle of left-handers, Claude Osteen and Mike McCormick. Now let's go to the seventh, and for more play, here's Jerry. All right, Billy, Jack Hyatt, Hal Lanier, and Gaylord Perry coming on here in the seventh inning. The Giants picked up two in the first on a single by Bobby Barnes with the bases loaded. That's all we have in the scoring department, and here's Hyatt at bat. He has struck out and fly down. Hyatt, right-hand hitter, number seven. Now the wind-up band, the pitch on the way to Jack. A swing and a foul to this strike one. On one, the count to Hyatt. Once again, Don Sutton to the wind-up band. It's pitch on the way. Knuckler comes in high for a ball, and the count is one and one. One ball, one strike. In the first inning... A walk to Hunt, an infield hit to Mays, a bad hop over Will's head on what might have been a double play ball. And then McCovey walked and Barnes singled to get the two runs in. That's it. There's a drive to left center field and it's going to be in for a base hit. Over to get it as Willie Davis turns and makes a good stop. Here's Hyatt on his way to second and he's in there with a double. Willie Davis made a good play on the ball to keep it from getting on by, but by that time Hyatt had a double. A liner into center field. Hit number six. Here is Lanier coming up now. Al Lanier stepping in. He has two hits in the game. The Giants have a total of six. Now the Dodgers will bring the infield up looking for a bunt with Lanier at bat and Perry to follow. Lanier is two for two. The Dodgers think they do a bunt now and the pitch has a full swing and a miss. Strike one. So Lanier a cut. Missed it. Oh, on the count, we're in the seventh inning. Six. 
Strike one to Lanier. High on second. He punts it in the air and it goes foul to the left and Haller can't get it. It's out of play. Strike two. So Lanier bunting it foul. Popped it up. Haller chased it for a while. Out of play. Day game tomorrow. Game time 1.15. Down Drysdale Day, and the ceremonies begin at 12.30. Now Sutton working to Lanier, batting to the left side. The pitch swung on it, missed strike three. Dropped by Haller, who runs down the line to tag him out. Strikeout number seven for Drysdale. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. 6.20 on your dial. This is KTAR Radio in Phoenix, Arizona. Time now is 29 minutes and 30 seconds after 9 o'clock. Here's Perry at bat now, sacrificed and butted into a double play. So Gaylord coming on here in the seventh inning with one on and one out. And Haller now to give a sign as Sutton gets set to work. The Dodgers move the infield back. Runner on at second base high to open the inning with a double. The pitch on the way, a swing and a miss, strike one. Nothing and one to count to Perry. On deck, Tito Fuentes. Bobby Bonds drove in the runs with a single in the first inning. The Atlanta Braves won their game tonight, beating San Diego. There's a swing and a miss at a breaking ball, strike two. Atlanta 10, San Diego 4 in Atlanta, and the Braves have won seven straight, lead the league by two over the Giants as of the moment. The Giants trying to cut it to a game and a half, and the Dodgers trying to make it two and a half. The Dodgers would certainly like to play the role of spoilers. Is a foul straight back, and the count stays. Strike two. Nothing and two, the count. We're in the seventh inning. Now again, the stretch and the look. High out off second, the pitch. Ground ball towards short. Wills up high. It's going to third, and the throw there, and they tag him out. So Hyatt is out trying to go to third base on a ground ball hit to shortstop. And Perry is safe at first on the fielder's choice. Wills to Lefevre for the out. And Tito Fuentes coming up now. So Hyatt cut down trying to go to third. Fuentes has one for three in the game. He singled in the second inning. Batting 269, playing third base. Batting from the left side against Don Sutton. Now Don Sutton ready to work. Pitch on the way. Outside. Ball one. One and oh that time. Fastball up and away. Cincinnati won a doubleheader from Houston. Three to nothing and four to three. A one hitter for Maloney in the first game. In the day game tomorrow, McCormick and Osteen are the opposing pitchers. Marshall and Singer on Sunday. Here's a strike. One and one now to Fuentes. Both Osteen and... Singer will be going for number 20. Marshall picked up his 20th against the Dodgers last week. 1-1 look, pitch on the way. A bouncer over the mound, knocked down by uh, Sutton, juggles, retrieves, and throws to first. So high bouncer at the mound, and Sutton up in the air, bounced it, and made the play. So they're all out on the seventh. No runs, one hit, and one left on. And the score at the end of six and a half innings. Giants two, the Dodgers nothing. Camp West Industries, located at 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix, is camper headquarters in the valley. It's the home of Tramper Camper, the quality-built camper that offers more for your camper dollar. And the beautiful Travette, the Cadillac of campers. Camp West features many accessories for your camper. In fact, everything that goes in, on, or around a camper. If the call of the desert, a rushing stream, tall pines, and the outdoors is your pleasure, a camper is the answer. Build your own. Camp West Industries has everything you need to do just that. But whether you're a do-it-yourselfer or prefer the ready-made type for quality campers and camper accessories, the place to see is Camp West at 2802 Grand Avenue. Easy to get to. Just north of Thomas Road and a block west of Black Canyon Freeway on Grand Avenue. Camp West is open six days a week, Monday through Friday till 9, Saturday till 5. So before you buy your camper, see Camp West, your volume camper dealer, for quality, price, and service. That's Camp West Industries, 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix. Now 
outstanding for the seventh inning stretch. The Dodgers have Davis Crawford Lefevre to try to get it started against Gaylord Perry, the tough right-hander for San Francisco. Gaylord has blanked the Dodgers on two singles, an infield hit by Wills in the first inning and a line single left by Sutton in the sixth. Davis is 0 for 2. Willie coming up now, hitting 312. 11 home runs, 59 runs about it in. Davis, where did he go? Big charge from the crowd. It's a big crowd tonight. Over 35,000 after the ball game to see the Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants. 20s plays in a third to guard against the bunt. Perry goes to the windup and the pitch on the way to Willie is a fastball inside ball one. He's got the, the Dodgers hitting the ball on the ground most of the night. A lot of sinkers fired up by Perry. One ball and no strikes. Alston standing up on the bench is a little further along toward third base now, trying to get a better look at Perry. One ball and no strikes. The windup and the pitch on the way. Taken low for a ball. Willie went up to front, let it go by. Two balls, no strikes. The last half of the seventh. A strike at the knees, and it's 2-1 and one to Willie. Backs out for a moment. 20's in at third. Lanier at short. Hunt at second. McCovey deep at first. Outfield around to the right. Marshall, Barnes, and Verda. Now 2-1 pitch on the way to Willie Davis. Bounce wide at third base in the hole at short. Lanier up with an off on a throw. Throw it away. And the ball will go to the dugout, and Willie Davis will be at second base. So Willie legs it out. It'll be a base hit for Davis and uh, no doubt an error coming up on the play to allow Willie to take the extra base. And the error on Lanier's throw. So Willie Davis is on second. An infield hit. And Lanier's off-balance throw into the dugout. So the Dodgers have a runner at second. Willie Crawford coming up. He has grounded out twice. Lanier draws the error. Crawford at bat. Lefevre on deck. We're in the seventh inning. Two to nothing. The Giants lead. That is only the third Dodger hit. Two of them have been on the infield. But here is Crawford now. Perry ready in the pitch. Taken low. Ball one. Time called as Hyatt. Walks it out in front of the plate. Flips it back to the mound. One ball. No strikes. game is in the seventh. One ball, no strike count. Time called now as Willie Crawford backs out. Willie has 11 home runs, 41 runs batted in, hitting 253. But Crawford is in now. Terry checks, delivers. A swing and a miss of the sinker, one and one. One ball and one strike. Perry taking his time now. Two to nothing ball game. And now Gaylord out of a stretch to look at Willie Davis. The pitch on the way. Crawford fouls it off. Uh, no, he misses it and the ball goes to the backstop. Here's Willie Davis around and stops at third base now. as Hyatt retrieves it. Thought for a moment the ball was fouled, but it was not. Willie swung and the ball got away from Jackie Hyatt. So that sinker sunk so much that it went all the way to the backstop on a swing and a miss. And down to third base goes Willie Davis. It is scored as a pass ball on Hyatt. Runner at third now. So that sinker really sunk into the dirt. Davis on third. Crawford waiting one and two. The pitch to him. Strike three. A swing and a miss. So Crawford down on strikes. And the batter will be Jimmy Lefevre. That is the third strikeout for Perry. Crawford down on strikes. Lefevre at bat has lined out the third and grounded out the second. 
The Giants are playing the infield back. They'll give up the run for the out. So here is Lefebvre at bat. Boy, Perry's had a good sinker tonight. He's had most of everything on the ground. Now Lefebvre trying to get him in. Pitch on the way. A ground ball to second. Hunt on one hop. Backhand go in time. The run is in, and Lefebvre's out. A good play by Hunt. But the Dodgers get a run, and it's 2-1 to one now, and the batter will be Gabriel. So Gabe coming up with a run in. Infield hit an error, a pass ball, and the ground out got it over. Gabe has grounded out twice to second base. 2-1 score. The Giants lead the Dodgers here in the seventh inning. The difference right now is the base hit by Willie Mays in the first inning that took a bad hop off Wills. With a runner on at first and a bouncer to short, Wills was all set to go for the double play, and the ball took the bad hop away. That set up a bases loaded situation as McCovey walked following that hit, then the base hit by Bonds. Curveball is low, one ball, no strike. So Sutton was not too lucky in the first inning. He walked to, gave up an infield hit, and then a solid single to left. Harry working, one ball, no strikes to Gabe. Outside, ball two, two and oh. Gableson has one home run, 17 runs batted in. On deck, Parker. McCormick and Osteen tomorrow. Two balls, no strikes, the windup and the pitch on the way. Bounce down the first baseline, McCovey wide up with it, and the underhand to Perry in time and the side retired. So Gabe bounces out for the third time. The Dodgers down in the seventh, one run, one hit, one error, and none left on. Score through seven, Giants two, and the Dodgers one. to go into the eighth inning of the game. Two to one. The Giants lead. Let's go back to play. Here's Ben. All right, Jerry. Two runs, six hits, and one error for the Giants. And they had two runs and two hits in the first inning. The Dodgers, one run, three hits. The Giants might very well have had a lot of trouble in the first inning except for the bad hopper off Will's glove. And the Dodgers would not have scored in the seventh inning except for the fact that Lanier threw it away. So both pitchers have put on quite an effort although Perry, as of the moment, still has Sutton by an edge. Time is out. Willie Davis in center field is picking up a white... Could that be a cat? He's got a white... Yeah, it's a rabbit, I think. He's a long way from here. He's a wiggling rabbit, I believe. (laughs) <laughs> Willie's caught a lot of flies, but that's the first time. I think it's a rabbit, although it's so hard to tell. He is carrying the animal on the track. He's now in left center field. <laughs> it's either a white cat or a white rabbit. And now one of the members of the ground crew has come over. <laughs> and now the the member of the ground crew is slowly taking our little friend off. Still trying to figure out if it's a cat or a rabbit. We have, <laughs> we get a report they have decided from here it's a rabbit. Okay. Tell you how to find out, get another rabbit. Okay. We're just about ready to go now. Eighth inning, two to one Giants. And Ron Hunt will start it off. He'll be followed by Dave Marshall and then Willie McCovey. Sutton into the windup. Right-hander delivers, and it's popped in the air. Back of the plate and off to the left. Tom Haller waiting for it to come down and makes the catch for the out. One away. Dave Marshall. Dave Marshall. Hitting 233. He has two home runs. 31 runs batted in. Willie Mays started the ball game. Get the bad hop single and scored in the first inning, although he limped noticeably. And then in the second inning, after popping up, he came out. The marshal is hitting in his spot. Dave playing left field, Bond center, and Berta in right. Marshall left-hand batter. He runs up to bunt, but he leaves it in Haller's mitt in the count 0-1. Marshall is from these parts. Dave is from, I mean, lives in Long Beach. 
Owen one. Sutton checks with Haller. Don Ruddy and delivers, and a breaking ball hits the plate and bounces over the shoulder of Ed Vargo. One ball and one strike. When the Dodgers bat in the bottom of the eighth, and they're trailing two to one, they have Parker, Haller, and Sutton spot. Jim Brewer loosening up in the Dodger bullpen. And Sutton into the windup, and the 1-1 pitch on the way. In there, fastball that got the corner, and the count one and two. Here's the one-two pitch on the way. Knuckler outside and high, ball two. Two and two. Two-two pitch on the way. Sutton ready and delivers. Knuckleball hit off the end of the bat to the left of Wills. Morey up with it at the bag and throws him out. So Marshall rolls to Morey Wills. Two down in the eighth inning. And here is Willie McCovey. Big Willie has walked and twice grounded sharply to West Parker. He's 0 for 2. With the bases empty, the Dodgers can put a modified McCovey shift on. The last time he came up, Wills was on the other side of second base. He is still on the shortstop side right now. The pitch to McCovey swung on and missed. Going after a breaking ball. 0-1. Now Wills moves over another foot, but he is still on his side of the bag. The next one, strike two, four. The fever is really playing shortstop. 0-2, the count to Willie McCovey. Sutton ready, here it comes. And it's a ground ball to Sizemore. He's up with it, throws to Parker. Giants are gone in the eighth at the end of seven and a half. Giants two, Dodgers one. Well, I'm like you. I listen to the radio a lot. Hear an announcer say something about, why don't you go out to the cooler and get yourself a cold, you know what? And I thought to myself all the times that I've asked you to go for a burger. You know, we've been giving you an awful lot of good free advice. Well, a little later on, just as good as the first one, maybe even better. Well, it's like we told you. Bergie's a light, refreshing, comfortable kind of beer. So, right now, why don't you go out to the refrigerator and get yourself a Bergie? Mm-hmm. Betting with the Giants two and the Dodgers one. The Giants two runs, six hits, and one error. They did their scoring in the first inning. The Dodgers one run, three hits, and no errors. One hit was a ground ball to Ron Hunt. He fielded the ball on the run, but then couldn't throw. Another was what appeared to be a high changeup that Sutton whacked into left field. And in the seventh inning, Willie Davis rolled one to the hole at short, beat it out, and when Lanier threw the ball away, Willie took second base. He moved to third on a pass ball and came home on an infield out. So neither club is hitting the pitcher. The Giants leading 2-1, to and we're in the bottom of the eighth. Wes Parker has struck out and grounded out. Wes 0 for 2. Jim Brewer joined by Ray Lamb now in the Dodger bullpen, and the pitch to Parker high as he ran up to bunt. 1-0. The Braves won their game. They beat San Diego 10-4. The Giants trying to hang tough and win tonight. Here's the 1-0 pitch on the way to Parker. Ground ball down to Lanier. Al is up with it and throws him out. There has not been a fly ball to the outfield. The only thing close to it, Tom Haller hit a high pop fly in the fifth inning into shallow left field. But Lanier went out a few steps and caught it. So the Dodgers have been unable to really do anything against Gaylord Perry. Haller also has struck out, so he's 0 for 2. Don Sutton on deck. Perry into the windup. Right hand already and delivers. Misses outside, ball one. He's had excellent control. He walked Wills in the third inning. But he's been right on the plate all night. 
Gaylord comes back 1-0, and it's hit foul off to the left of the plate, rolling to the backstop, and the count 1-1. One and one. Two to one Giants, bottom of the eighth, first game of the three-game series. Don Drysdale day tomorrow, a 1-15 game. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Ground ball to the hole, that's going to go through into right field for a base hit. Bob Berta up to get the ball. That base hit by Haller keeps Don Sutton in the game because now he comes up to the plate. And we'll see if they have Don sacrificing. He fouled out in the third. Joshua will now run for Tom Haller. And Sutton will come up and we'll see what the Dodgers have Don try to do. The giant bullpen begins to clear a path down there as they move the chairs, so in a moment there'll be somebody throwing. Joshua at first base. One out. Left-hander Don Bryant and right-hander Frank Lindsay in the giant bullpen. Tito Puentes in on the grass at third. Looking for the bunt and Sutton pushes one foul the other way. 0-1. With Puentes charging the plate. Sutton trying to keep the ball away from the third baseman and he tried to roll it up along the first baseline. 0-1 the count. Many times this year, in what appeared to be definite bunt situations, the Dodgers had Sutton swing away, but he's around to bunt now and takes outside, one and one. Sutton has 14 hits. Three runs batted in. One and one to count it on. One out in the eighth. Giants two, Dodgers one. The pitch to Sutton. He looks and it's low. Ball two. Two and one. Wills in the on-deck circle. Giants got two in the first inning. The Dodgers got one in the seventh. And now they're trying to get the tying run in the eighth. Perry at the belt. The pitch to Sutton. He bunts up along first. McCovey picks it up and has to come to Sutton. And Joshua moves to second base. All right, the tying run is at second, but that's a long way away from home plate, the way Gaylord Perry has pitched. And the batter will be Maury Wills. to the Dodgers one and Maury Wills at the plate he had the infield single walked and hit into the double play Perry at the belt looks at Joshua at second and the pitch is slapped foul off third going to the second deck and the count 0-1 Ted Sizemore on deck Giants two Dodgers one bottom of the eighth two out Joshua a lead at second base. Perry reading his catcher, Jackie Hyatt. Now the right hand already in the strike one pitch to Maury Will. Perry delivers and is a ground ball to Ron Hunt. He has it, throws him out, and that's that. The Dodgers continue to hit little ground balls to the infield. No runs, one hit a man left, and at the end of eight, Giants two, Dodgers one. Say you baseball fans who have tried Farmer John Ham know that it's in a league by itself, and we suggest that you fans who haven't yet made this discovery make a note to do it soon. Farmer John Ham has a special flavor like no other ham you've ever tasted. Farmer John smokes it slowly and patiently for several days, not just for several hours. And he smokes it a secret old-time western way over native western wood to give it a wonderful western flavor through and through. What's more, Farmer John Ham is as fresh as fresh can be. It's made from fresh eastern corn-fed pork, brought out here live, U.S. inspected and dressed fresh right here in the West. Most other packers ship their pork in frozen or cold storage. So enjoy a sweet, succulent Farmer John ham soon. Just be sure to ask the butcher for a genuine Farmer John ham. Gold medal winner at the California State Fair. And once you try one, I'm sure you'll agree. It's the easternmost in quality and the westernmost in flavor. By the way, here's Danny Goodman's end-of-the-year bargain special. 
Send one dollar your name and address, and you get six eight by ten color photos of Dodger players, a Dodger rabbit's foot bat and keychain, and the Dodgers 1969 yearbook. Send your request to Danny Goodman here at Dodger Stadium, 90012. Jeff Torborg has taken over for Tommy Haller since Von Joshua had run for Tom. We're going to the ninth inning, two to one Giants. The paid attendance, 37,078. We're also delighted to have with us tonight a group of Marines here from Camp Pendleton, all wounded veterans back from action in Vietnam. We're honored to have them here. Bobby Barnes will start it off in the ninth, followed by Bob Berta and then Jack Hyatt. Bobby Bond, single to left field to drive in two runs in the first inning. Gaylord Perry has made them stand up. It is two to one Giants, and we're now in the ninth. Don Sutton into the windup, and the right-handed delivers, and it's popped in the air foul off to the right of the plate. No play for Torborg. He's over to take a look, but that's all. Back in here amongst the customers, 0 and 1. Hope you'll be with us tomorrow if you possibly can. Don Drysdale Day, a 115 game. Then Sunday, well, the pitchers tomorrow, Mike McCormick and Claude Osteen. On Sunday, Juan Marshall and Bill Singer. Monday, an off day. And Tuesday night, the Houston Astros for the last three nights and the last three games of the year. Bobby Barnes waiting, 0-1 the count. Jim Lefebvre right at the bag at third. The strike one pitch to Bobby. A bunt attempt fouled at the plate in the count 0-2. Bond single, struck out, and fly to left. Sutton reading to board. Bonds waiting. Strike two pitch to Bob. Swung on and missed, strike three. So Bobby Barnes strikes out for the second time. After the first inning, Sutton has pitched a gem. However, it was like the last time he pitched in reverse, where you said, gee, he pitched eight and two-third great innings. But then he lost his grip on the game in the ninth. Tonight, apparently, with Gaylord Perry pitching a great ball game, it is the first inning that causes him all his concern. Here's Bob Berta. Berta struck out, grounded out, and flied to center. He takes the strike. 0 and 1. The next one in the dirt and goes to the backstop. 1 and 1. When Don Sutton pitched a great game for 8 and 2 thirds, he struck out 10. He walked two men and wound up losing the game two to one. Tonight he's losing two to one. He has struck out eight. The pitch outside, ball two, two and one. Two and one to the left hand hitting Bob Berta. Over three. Sutton into the windup and the two one pitch on the outside corner with a change, strike two, two and two. The Dodgers in the ninth inning have Sizemore, Davis, and Crawford. The 2-2 pitch. A drive to right center field, but Davis was shading Bird of the air and makes the catch for the second out. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. You can charge your purchases and take many months to pay at Solo Foods, 5001 East Washington, and Phoenix, where you could use your Arizona Bank, Bank America. ATAR Phoenix. Two down here in the ninth inning. Giants two, Dodgers one, and Jackie Hyatt, the batter. Hyatt struck out and flied to right. He doubled but was out in the seventh inning as he tried to cross over to third on a ground ball by Perry. Right hand batter. Fastball for a strike. Going one. Two to one, Giants in the ninth. Sutton ready, and back he comes, 0-1. Breaking ball, hit off the end of the stick, sounded like he cracked the bat. 
Sizemore throws him out on that side. So Sutton hits well, but not well enough in Cincinnati. We'll see if that's going to be the same story here in Los Angeles. At the end of eight and a half, the Giants two, the Dodgers one. Driver. Camp Rob. headquarters in the Valley is Camp West Industries, 2802 Grand Avenue in Phoenix, just north of Thomas Road. Camp West, featuring two outstanding lines of quality campers, Tramper Camper and Travette, and 75 different models to choose from. They've got a camper to suit your needs, your budget. Thank you. Coach Bonino, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Peoria, every major city in the United States. Let's see now. Area codes, emergency numbers, long distance information, Helpful hints. Why, well, you imbecile. This is the telephone book. It can't be. Get out of this car. Immediately. But we are doing something. Don't worry for us. It's only five miles over the speed limit. Pacific Telephone reminds you that the front pages of your telephone book contain valuable information. That's why it's called... The Informer. Bottom of the ninth inning, the Giants two runs, six hits, and one error. The Dodgers one run, four hits, and no errors. Ted Sizemore, Willie Davis, and Willie Crawford against Gaylord Perry. Perry has turned in a tremendous effort, and the Giants need just that to overcome Sutton and also to stay even with the Braves. Braves already won their ball game ten to four, and you can imagine that half inning by half inning reports of this game being announced all throughout the state of Georgia. Ted Sizemore, twice hit into force plays, and last time up grounded out. In going over the eight innings, there has not been a fly ball to the outfield. That's how tough Gaylord Perry has been. All ground balls. He's into the windup, and the pitch to Sizemore, a strike at the knees. He has not been overpowering. He has struck out only two. He has walked just one. He would not have been scored upon, however, as things turned out, except that Lanier threw one away. The strike one pitch. Outside and a little high. One ball and one strike. Bryant and Lindsay in the giant bullpen. Bryant the left-hander. One and one to count to Ted Sizemore. Gaylord Perry into the windup, and the 1-1 pitch on the way. Fastball is hit into left center field, but fading on the ball is Marshall to make the catch. The first and only fly ball to the outfield, and Sizemore hit it pretty hard, but it's a long out. One down, and the batter, Willie Davis. Willie Davis hit into a force play, grounded to short. And hit the ground ball of the hole at short. That was a base hit. Lanier tried to get him and threw it away. So he took second on the overthrow. He took third on a pass ball and scored on an infield out. That's the only Dodger run. That's how tough Perry has been. So one out of the ninth, two to one Giants. Perry into the windup and the pitch to Davis. The ground ball of Lanier. Al has it, throws to first. And the Dodgers are down to their last out. Outfielder George Foster is now going down across the right field foul line and heading for the giant bullpen. He goes down there with two out and the base is empty in the ninth. I guess to get ready just in case. The Dodgers have only Willie Crawford standing between Perry and a giant victory. Willie has hit into a force play, grounded a short and struck out, and he takes outside ball one. Two out in the ninth. Willie trying desperately in the number four spot to do something about Perry's performance. The Dodgers have only four hits and one run. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Taken for a strike at the knees inside corner. One ball, one strike. Jim LaFever on deck. A reminder, 1-15 game tomorrow. It's Don Drysdale Day. The pregame ceremonies begin at 12-30. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch on the way to Willie Crawford. Slow ground ball up along first, and it goes foul. Foul ball, as it was picked up by McCovey a few feet in front of the bag. 
if Willie Crawford had not run it out, McCovey then could have afforded to let the ball come back in, if it would. But he couldn't afford to gamble, and he finally had to reach for it as Willie went hustling down the line. And the Dodgers are down to their last strike. The Giants needed a great pitching performance tonight, and that's exactly what they have gotten from Gaylord Perry. One and two to count to Willie Crawford. Perry ready and delivers, and it's fouled away. Two runs, six hits, one error for the Giants. One run, four hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Bottom of the ninth. Gaylord Perry into the windup, and the one-two pitch on the way is fouled off. So Willie Crawford trying to hang in there against Gaylord Perry, who was trying to win his 18. Now the one-two pitch is a slow roller up along first. Perry down to pick it up, and tags Crawford going by, and the ball game is all over. As Gaylord Perry has the Dodgers beating the ball into the dirt, and the Giants beat the Dodgers two to one. Two runs, six hits, one error for the Giants. One run, four hits, no errors for the Dodgers. The Giants remain a game and a half back of the Braves. And tomorrow afternoon, it'll be Mike McCormick and Claude Osteen on Don Drysdale Day. Once again, the final score of the ballgame, the Giants two and the Dodgers one. Well, now this is Ben Scully along with Jerry Doggett inviting you to stay tuned for the postgame show coming right up. Dodger Baseball is brought to you by Farmer John. Look for Farmer John fine quality pork products in your market. If you don't see them, ask for them. By the people at Pacific Telephone to remind you, when it comes to communications, we're here to help. By your Union 76 dealer who invites you to fill up with Royal 76 Premium, the gasoline designed for today's driving.